Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. In the name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Merciful, we praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we send peace and blessings upon Muhammad, the seal of the prophets and messengers, and his family, his companions, and all those who call to his way to the day of judgment. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. We pray that Allah gives peace to all those who are watching this program, all those who are fasting in the month of Ramadan, and we pray that Allah also gives peace to those who are not Muslim and helps them to enter into a state of Islam. Alhamdulillah, all praise is due to Allah, Lord of the worlds. The month of Ramadan is a source of great blessings. But the month of Ramadan also is a source of power. It is a spiritual powerhouse. And it is that opportunity where believers can raise their level and seek the, the, the forgiveness and seek the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a way that is not available in any other time during the year. The Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, in his relationship with his companions, gave the example not only for them, but it is through his talking to them, interacting with them, that the Quran itself was revealed. It is through this relationship that also we as Muslims today um, can actually seek understanding and we can better realize the blessings and the guidance coming from Islam. It is reported that the Prophet, peace be upon him, on one occasion informed his companions of a man from Beni Israel that this man wore his armor and struggled fighting in the path of Allah for 1,000 months. The companions were amazed because this, of course, would equal around 83.3 years. And the Sahaba were amazed at this. And at that point, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed um, the Surah Al-Qadr, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Inna anzalnahu fi laylatul Qadr, wa ma adraka ma laylatul Qadr, laylatul Qadr khayrun min alfi shahar, tanazzalul malaikatu wa ruhu fiha, bi idhni rabbihim min kulli amr. Salamun hiya hatta matla al fajr Allah revealed in this verse, we have indeed, or this chapter, we have indeed revealed this message in the night of power. And what will explain to you what the night of power is? The night of power and destiny is better than a thousand months. Therein come down the angels and the spirit, Jibreel alayhi salam, by Allah's permission, on every errand. Peace, this continues until the rise of the morning. And so Laylatul Qadr is a special occasion. And the Prophet, peace be upon him, also informed his followers in relationship to the first part of the hadith where he said, مَنْ صَامَ رَمَضَانْ إِيمَانًا وَاحْتِسَابًا غُفِرَ لَهُ مَا تَقَدَّمَ مِنْ ذَنْبِي he also said, وَمَنْ قَامَ لَيْلَةُ الْقَدْرِ إِيمَانًا وَاحْتِسَابًا غُفِرَ لَهُ مَا تَقَدَّمَ مِنْ ذَنْبِ So altogether, the Prophet, peace be upon him, said, whoever fasts in the month of Ramadan with true faith and confident expectation in divine reward would have all of his sins forgiven. And whoever stands in prayer on the night of power with faith and confident expectation in the reward of Allah would have all of his sins forgiven. So, standing, qiyam, on the night of Laylatul Qadr is very important. When we look at the Laylatul Qadr itself, the concept itself, we see many different meanings. And the Qadr, in this sense, is dealing with glory, with power, with status, also with destiny. It is in this uh, evening that the angels actually are writing uh, uh, the, the different uh, commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that powerful events are happening during this time. And the Prophet, peace be upon him, uh, received the revelation on the 27th. And so it is in that odd night, uh, within the last 10 days, that the Prophet, peace be upon him, received the revelation. And the Sahaba themselves focused on the 27th. But in one tradition, Aisha reports that the Prophet ﷺ actually said, Search for Laylatul Qadr on the odd nights 
of the last 10 days of the month of Ramadan. So therefore, what he was saying, peace and blessings be upon him, is that not only do you seek Laylatul Qadr on the 27th, but you also seek Laylatul Qadr on the 21st night, on the 23rd, on the 25th, on the 27th, and the 29th. And this is of critical importance, especially now that we are entering the last third of the month of Ramadan, because many people wait until the 27th to begin to search, and it may be possible that Laylatul Qadr would appear on the 21st night or on the 23rd or on the 25th. Another issue which is important is to recognize the fact or the reality of the lunar calendar. So when you are looking on your Islamic calendar and it says the 18th, the evening of that night is when it switches to the 19th. So therefore, it is the 18th during the day and it starts at Maghrib the 19th because darkness before light. So therefore, when you're looking at your calendar for the 21st night, it would actually be on the 20th day. So that evening, uh, it changes into the 21st night for those who have that type of calendar uh, where it would appear like that. So believers are encouraged to seek uh, Laylatul Qadr on any of these nights. But of course, based upon the, the, the traditions that are available, upon the words of the Sahaba and the Prophet Sallallahu we do recognize the 27th as being uh, the strongest uh, of these uh, different nights in the last part of the month of Ramadan. Laylatul Qadr is better than a thousand months. And so the Sahaba, radiallahu anhum ajma'een, recognized at that point that this night was actually better, they would receive a reward that was better than this person from Beni Israel who wore his, his armor and who fought in the path of, of, of Allah for 1,000 months, for 83.3 years. This is a special blessing, a special reward that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to the ummah of Muhammad alayhi afdal salatu wa This is the last ummah. This is the final nation, the largest nation on the day of resurrection. And we need to consider this when we are organizing our time uh, for the last bit of this month. If we have not kept up our ibadah, then we should now focus and intensify in our worship. If we have not made Salatul Tarawih, then we should focus and perform the Tarawih. If we have not come back to the masjid making tahajjud, even after the Tarawih, if we have not given special time, then we should focus in this last section of the month. This is the time to seek the reward of Allah Azza wa Jal. We don't know whether we will be able to return to this earth again. And this Laylatul Qadr is an important evening that we need to seek uh, a closer relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. During this time when the recording is being done, we need to be in a state of purity. We need to be asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive us, asking Allah to improve us, asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to, to, to protect the, 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 the ummah of the Prophet sallallahu to, to raise the banner of Islam in this world. Asking the Muslim, asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to have mercy upon all those Muslims who are giving their lives and who are dying in terrible droughts and in terrible floods. So Laylatul Qadr is an important night of glory. It is a night of destiny. It is a night of power. It is a night when that relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala comes close, where we can seek mercy, we can seek forgiveness, and where we can actually raise ourselves to a status unheard of in the other communities. If we have the opportunity to be inside of the masjid on all of these evenings, then we know that we're able. So what some people will do, just to be sure of it, then they will stand up in prayer, in tahajjud prayer, and try to get the benefits of this night on the 21st evening, on the 23rd, on the 25th, 27th, and the 29th. It's very important to remember that when the 27th is over, that Laylatul Qadr could possibly come on the 29th. There is a tendency for people to reach their culmination point on the 27th evening, and after that, 
they are preparing themselves for the, the, the Salatul Eid, for the end of the month. This is a mistake. Because the Prophet ﷺ has told us, seek it in all of the odd nights. So therefore the 29th evening as well, we should seek the, the, the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We should seek to strengthen that connection. It is a time of dua. It is a time of asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to have mercy. And the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, would make certain du'as and it is recommended that we would say Allahumma innaka afuun tuhibbul afwa fa'afu anna O oh Allah, you are forgiving, you are merciful and you love to forgive so please have mercy on us please forgive us please release us of the sins that we are involved in and so we need to make this du'a and we need to make any du'a that we are sincere about. We have to remember that in Islam, the success is not based upon quantity. It is not based upon the amount of times that we are asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to have mercy upon us. But it is based upon quality. It is based upon sincerity. And that ikhlas, that sincerity within the heart of the individual, only Allah azza wa jal knows who is really sincere and who is not sincere. And so we need to humble ourselves. If we have to do it alone, if it is better for a person to do it in the darkness of their home, it is better, if it is better for them to go away from people, then do it on that evening. Whatever is needed to be the most sincere, to get the closest to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then we should do it on the night of power, to try to take full advantage of this opportunity to be blessed for more than a thousand months at countless reward and untold blessings that Allah Azza wa Jal is giving to the believers. This is a great opportunity if we have the chance to fly into Mecca to Mukarramah and to be there in the evening, in the dua, in the haram of Mecca, then this is a great opportunity with unlimited blessings. If we can't do that, go to Medina. If you can't do that, go to Masjid al-Aqsa. If we can't do that, pray inside the Jamia, inside of your community, anywhere where you can come together with the believers and be as sincere as you possibly uh, can be. And above all, remember in that dua, remember to uh, uh, you know, state the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to ask for forgiveness. This is the time of sincerity. May Allah accept our dua. May Allah accept our striving and give us the best in this life and the hereafter. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li walakum wa salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.